G'day fellas, and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the south side of the map, playing in the color yellow as the Holy Roman Empire. It's Wallalol! And he is, uh, well, <laughs> sorry, that was totally, like, uncalled for. I just, you, you, sometimes you just gotta do it. You just gotta do it. When you're casting a guy named Wallalol, you just gotta do it. Anyway, on the other side of the map, playing in the color purple as the French. It's Voldemar 1902. Once again, caveat here being that uh, I don't know if this is the real one. I don't know if this is a fake one. Will the real Voldemar 1902 please stand up? Uh, and uh, then we might be able to tell who exactly you are. Uh, but anyway, I'm looking forward to seeing this because we've got a little bit of a switch up here. Normally, the French have a real advantage in this matchup. Mainly because knights are very good against the Holy Roman Empire, just simply because the knights kill villagers, and the Holy Roman Empire, well, they like villagers, and most importantly, they like avoiding military until the castle age. But there's been a change recently. I don't know if you've heard about it, but the Minework Palace is a churning with changes. There are two big changes to the Minework Palace. Most notably, the castle age change, which gives you access to a brand new technology, which gives you two armor on your knights. That's you know armor cladding that the English get on their men at arms? It's the exact same thing, but for knights, for the Holy Roman Empire. Crazy new buffs for them. The other upgrade is one that used to be exclusively available in the Imperial Age called Riveted Chainmail. It was available for the spearmen only and increased their armor by three points. So Relic said, what we're going to do is we're going to take that Imperial Age upgrade, we're going to move it to the Feudal Age, and we're going to make it affect horsemen as well. And then we're just going to reduce it from three to two. And that's what happened. And so now we've got this crazy feudal age technology as well called Riveted Chainmail, which I suspect in this matchup is going to be incredible. Now let's talk a little bit about why that might be. Typically, the French love to open up with a, a school of cavalry and then move into knights. Now that's not always the case. And in fact, I suspect it won't be today as the Chamber of Commerce comes down for Voldemar. Uh, but... Normally, the Chamber of Commerce comes down and it starts off with knights. Then from there, the enemy typically is going to be going spearmen to deal with the knights. So the French player will start making archers to deal with those spearmen. And then the opposing player will go for horsemen, which will counter those. And so very often we'll see fr games where French are involved, where French is making knights and archers, and the defender is making horsemen and spearmen. Do you see where I'm going with this? Yes, those two units are the units that are affected by the brand new technology available in the Minework Palace in the Feudal Age, the Horsemen and the Spearmen. An additional two armor is going to mean quite a lot when you're talking about knights battling it out in big numbers here. So I suspect that this could have a pretty pivotal role here, depending on how Wallalol looks to play. Whether he looks to play it in the Feudal Age or whether he looks to go to Castle Age, I think it's kind of open to him at the moment. I, I would probably just go for a Castle Age, honestly, and then just play into the Knights, look to try and pick up Relics. And it's it's always going to be hard, though, because your enemy's trading. So if you think you can do it, uh, then go for it. But we do see Voldemar. Look at this. Check this out right here. We've got Voldemar going for the Forestry upgrade. 30 seconds, and he's going to have a free trader in here. Now, another thing to note is you need to send a Villager down to the opposite corner, and that's exactly what he's doing. Very good, Voldemar. You have learnt well, my student. But where is your mill? We don't see any mill for Voldemar at the moment. So the first of his traders is going to be coming out. Tell you what, this is a pretty damn quick, uh, pretty quick uh, landmark completion for him. Four minutes. So very good positioning here for Voldemar. Hidden away in the forest as well. Going to be extra hard for his enemy to spot this out and find it. And we do see now the villager, or rather the scout going to run in. Going to spot out that chamber of commerce as well. So he knows straight away, okay, it's a trade game. We've got to try and shut this down. And I suspect that's going to mean that Wallalol says, you know what, we probably need to fight this one in Feudal. And if so, that's that's probably a good idea. Now, as I mentioned before, you can try and fight in Castle Age with Knights, but you never know how far ahead the French player is going to get with those early traders. And that's what makes the difference here because we're familiar with the concept of trade and the tempo of trade because we've had plenty of time to adjust to it now. So we know that as long as you shut it down by about four or five minutes, you should be okay. The problem is, French trade is a whole different beast. And that is because the tempo that is associated with French trade is completely uncalculatable. At least at this point in time, I don't know whether that's a word, I just made it up, I'm bringing it to you live through the power of the internet. 
So, what do I mean? I mean that you... You can make one trader every 25 seconds. And I can calculate that, okay, that's going to pay itself off in roughly, you know, somewhere around the, the four to five minute mark. So I want to hit you before then. French trade is different though. Because every single economic tech that the French get, they're going to be getting a free trader. Which means extra tempo for their trade. And if you've got a trader that's been trading for an extra four or five minutes that you didn't account for, that's an extra 360 gold that your enemy is now going to be getting. Or in this case, an extra 370... Is it 372? <laughs> That's, it's probably not 372. It's definitely not 372. I can, I can, I can tell you that right now. Scout out here being annoying. Uh, it, I mean... 300 and carry, carry the one. 40, 300 and... 332. <laughs> That's some quick math for you guys. It's a bit of a meme, but at the same time, it's a bit of a dream. So uh, don't get mad at it. But uh, villager number one looks like it will be going down. Wallalol going to be starting us off with the first villager kill of the game. It's going to be a horseman taking a look in the base of, of uh, Wallalol. And we can see that extra armor has already come through. He will have two armor on this horseman. Which means that this horseman is going to be very effective against enemy knights. And speaking of enemy knights, enemy spearmen going to be coming out. Or rather just spearmen. Or also what they're known as. Spearmen going to be coming out. So I didn't even get to show you the tech before it was revealed. It's the, the technology that was down here. Uh, and essentially, it is going to be providing two melee armor to your horsemen. To your spearmen. Now, remember the Mindwork Palace also counts as a blacksmith. And not only that, but it reduces the cost of your associated technologies. Fitted leatherwork here, only going to be costing 105 resources. When normally, it would be costing, if I remember correctly, 150 so it's a pretty decent discount right there that you've got. Let me let me double check that. Yeah, 150 seems about right. Knight going to be coming in on the backside though. Going to be looking to get a charge in. We'll hit the scout. Remember, the scout's going to be able to regen. So he doesn't mind taking these hits. He's really committing to this scout though. I tell you what. Scout is going to go down. So Voldemar does get it. But now looking to try and take out the, uh, the spearman. Remember that spear's got the extra health. And now we do see fitted leatherwork going to be coming through as well for Wallalol. Looking to really take advantage of this melee bonus that's come in. Now, over on the other side of the map, how many traders are we running for Mr. Voldemar? And he's up to four traders. So, mm, nothing too crazy at this point in time. He's just kind of he's just kind of chilling at the moment. I like the fact that he has opened with the stable. But we need to start seeing an archery range coming out for him. The problem is, the numbers coming out from Wallalol are pretty good at this point in time. How many prelates are we running? He's running two prelates, so it's a double prelate play. And I do like this. I think that this is the right thing to do. And uh, now going to be able to push through into the enemy trade. Trader might go down here. At the very least. Oh, it looks like he will go down. So that gold delivery. Oh, we were so damn close. 166 gold. Almost going through to the pocket of Voldemar there. And now the units of his enemy going to be burning down his market. This is where things start to get really sour for Voldemar. You can see how quick Wallalol has been out of the gate. French trade and their tempo. Well, take a look at this. Voldemar a little bit slow to add in. The archery rangers, unfortunately. And it's going to be one of those things where it's like people haven't really worked out exactly when the tempo is or, or you know, when, when the strongest timing should be. But I do suspect what we're probably going to see is people going Chamber of Commerce into like full one base eco upgrades and then just playing defensive off that. Same kind of thing that Voldemar looked to do here. But uh, just adding in a few more units than what Voldemar has um, added in. Another knight going to get swept up. So that's, uh, I think that's two knights now going down. And Wallalol having an absolute field day here. Army value looking pretty solid. And he's just going to continue funneling units over to the other side of the map. But hold on a minute. We got a pause in production back at home. Is he thinking about potential castle ages here? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that if you're going to play this kind of style, you really commit to this. Because this is a siege style. If you're going for archers, archers don't have a lot of siege going with them. They can make battering rams. But the actual units themselves, they don't really have that much siege. But these two units in composition have amazing siege. An extra 13 torch damage here. 13 torch damage right here. So plenty of torch damage. Village are going to get chased back towards the gate. The new wall's been exposed. And survival techniques now going to be coming through for Wallalol as well. So he'll be moving out onto the deer. Brings the double prelate out with him. Jeez Louise, these guys are, these guys are in a hurry. And now the full wall trying to come through for Voldemar. Villagers... On the move, on the south side. What's he? What's he? What's he doing with this? Oh, he's looking for the rewall down here on the south. 
I can't even check the market because unfortunately the market's been completely destroyed. Blacksmith coming in. Only a single trader remains. He's got actually a couple of traders just chilling up here at the moment. Three traders. So not terrible. The knight does get caught out of position and it is going to go down. Now we see the horseman coming through as well. This is where that extra, that extra upgrade coming in now, that extra armor. Spears looking to try and bolster. You can see the charge hitting the front line of the horseman. Going to be doing plenty of damage there, but it's going to be a hold for a little bit longer for Voldemort. Able to hold on a bit longer. But now those numbers starting to boost up. And this is where the problem lies. Is that you've got a French player who's gone for trade and it's been shut down completely. Compared to a Holy Roman Empire player who's gone for, well, a mine work palace. And everything you're doing is playing into his hands. This is his game plan. This is what he wants to do. This is how he lives his life. I can, I can hear Rihanna singing right now in the background together with TI. Like a hit coming out of 2005. They are just living their lives right now. And this is big. I mean, you, you look at the upgrades that are coming through. We start to see now, in addition to all the other ones, marching drills coming through. So maximizing the use coming out of the Minework Palace. Literally every single upgrade you can get that's relevant to this army is going to be coming through now with marching drills. And I suspect we might have a new Feudal Age power coming through here with this single buff, this single, this single change. One technology changes the Feudal Age forever. And now a barracks on the front line. Going to be sieged down. At the same time, knights. Ooh, knights do hit villages. Decent little job here. He's taken out six of them so far. Not too bad on the worker kills. Up to seven now. Not bad for Voldemar. Get some worker kills out there. And Wallalol's now sitting on 32 vills. So, ooh, I tell you what, that's starting to look a little bit concerning, isn't it? But the horsemen going to be coming in underneath the town center. Remember, these guys have got extra, um, extra melee armor. No extra ranged armor, though. So that town center, together with those archers, going to be doing absolute work here. Horsemen just going to be looking to clean it up. Going to be also mixing in horsemen here from Voldemar as well. Spears going to be moving up towards the north. Do spot out some of these traders, but the traders got no gold in them. Traders, what are you guys doing? Where, where are you guys going, traders? I'm actually curious. Where are you guys going and what are you doing? What's the plan? Why? What? Why? Why, traders? Not like this. Archers moving up to the north. Knight's going to be joining the party as well. More horsemen on the way through. And this is where Voldemar needs to start adding in spearmen. Now, he has added in the, the first of the barracks. Voldemar, what's wrong with over here? Why, are you like, are you planning for a uh, a keep or something? I think that, that's what he's doing. He's probably planning for a keep. The knights do come in. That extra armor from the for the spearmen will keep them alive for a little bit longer. Look at the trades that they're getting here as well. He's just taking out knights left, right, and center. Look at the spears. Jeez, dude. Did you, I'm not sure if you guys saw that, but he, he took out like three knights and a horseman, that single spearman. He was just taking names and writing them down and burning them and pointing, putting little stabby things. That's the wrong, wrong, wrong thing, Drongo. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's going for a keep. That's what this is. He's got all of the buildings in a specific formation. That's why the barracks is in this weird little spot down here. Voldemar, what was wrong with here? Why didn't we go there? It's a weird spot, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll allow it for now. So Voldemar going to be moving into triple composition as the French, which is definitely the right choice for him. Whenever, if, if, my opinion is, if you're playing French Royal Knight Archers and your enemy goes Horseman Spearman, you just add in Spearman as well. And now they're kind of like, they're kind of stuck, right? So... Yeah, I think this is a good play from Voldemar. Uh, my question is going to be, how does the economy go uh, for Wallalol when he's down 15 vils at this point in time? But hold on a minute. Economy might mean nothing as the Holy Roman Empire player is just absolutely rampaging over the top of Voldemar. He pushes out of his base with what seemed to be a pretty decent sized army, but he's going to be losing absolutely everything. Villagers getting pulled from the top rope right now, looking to try and get this outpost up as quickly as they can. But even in the best case scenario, you can see just how many he's got there. He's got 15 vills, five jump inside. All the rest are going to get mauled. Seven vills gone down so far this game. Wallalol continuing to take out units. And the first of the spearmen, or first of the spearmen rather, make their way out for Voldemar. Plenty of villagers going down here. And I tell you what, Wallalol's looking strong. He's up 20 military population early on in this game. We're 14 minutes through. There's been non-stop action this game. So if you are enjoying this game, make sure you do go and check out Voldemar1902. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can catch him live over on Twitch. He's a pretty good player. I think at the moment sitting at about Conk 3. Uh, Wallalol, on the other hand, I think is uh, currently... I think he also might be Conqueror, maybe Conk 1. Uh, so Wallalol definitely, uh, you know, playing in the big leagues here. And he's doing a pretty decent job. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm loving the way he's playing this really nice play from him. And I'm loving this different style from the whole Holy Roman Empire. We are seeing a Minework Palace. Uh, yeah, Minework Palace coming out. He's picked up all of the relevant upgrades. And now we see the Battering Ram coming in. Siege Engineering, of course, being that final puzzle piece in the Exodia. And where are the rest of those units? There they are. Look at them. Look at the way that he's just funneling them in. He's got so much production back here. Triple stable, 
double barracks pumping out units non-stop this guy means business here do not mess with him over on the other side Voldemar. i mean he's got a whole bunch of production but he's not producing anything the poor guy he's got a whole bunch of gold in the bank how much how many traders are we talking over here for Voldemar? five traders five traders and he's got this much gold i tell you what we got macro problems at home that's for sure how many vills does he have in gold? He's got zero vills on gold. Oh, maybe he just got it all deposited then. I think he, uh, I think it all just got deposited then. More upgrades going to be coming through now for Wallalol. And we do see Voldemar actually taking some farms quite early on, 15 minutes. Now, he doesn't really have any other accessible food sources. He's obviously up here, seven vills. That'll take some time to get through. He's got berries out the front as well. And a boar over towards the west side, which has been taken. Villagers, looks like one of them managing to take the brunt of the attack. Remember, he, he does have textiles, but textiles does not count as an economic upgrade. So he wouldn't have got a free trader for it, if he did, even if he did try to. Uh, not going to count. There's a couple villages here on the front line. Going to have to fall back. Outpost coming through. Looks like he's going to be picking up the fortification. And now this, this supreme combo. I'm loving this supreme Holy Roman Empire combo. It is just deadly. Do not mess with it. Spearmen, horsemen, battering rams. Entering into the base now of his opponent Voldemar going to be on the defensive and now the horseman looking to try and make it behind enemy lines single spearman coming out looking to defend it against many a horseman nice little split down over onto that west side it's going to be looking for more and more villagers more and more traders rather those horsemen able to tank up plenty of damage against the spears now going to have a bit of trouble against the knights the town center as well working in tandem and more units going to be coming in spearmen with their spears in hand looking to chase down that cavalry and indeed, they find them. That extra armor just doing so much work in these fights, allowing them to stay alive for a little bit longer. And good game is going to get called. Voldemar going to be tapping out. And Wallalol going to be winning this game. Beautiful game coming through from Wallalol. Fellas, if you've enjoyed this one, go check out Voldemar. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can catch his Twitch. He's from Germany, but he streams in English. Go catch him out. He's a hell of a guy. You'll love him. I love him. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. A little bit of a confession right there for you.